Good afternoon, day of Pentecost Full Gospel Church. Thank the Lord for another privilege to be here in your midst and to greet all of you in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. I was glad when, it's, when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I would like to share with you this afternoon a portion of scripture coming from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that endureth not, entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own by name, and leadeth them out. <clears throat> and when he putteth putteth forth his own sheep to go before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. I thought of that scripture this afternoon because it kind of goes along with uh, the sermon that God gave me for this afternoon and um, how we can identify with Christ because we know him by his voice. This is the word of God for the people of God. Oh 
For my Psalmonic scripture this afternoon, I would like to call your attention to Psalm 103, verses 1 through 12. And we find these words. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who giveth all thine, forgiveth all thine iniquities, and who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thee, thy life from destruction, who cuff, crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good tidings, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous, plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep anger, his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. My topic this afternoon, characteristics of the Savior. Characteristics of the Savior. I want to look at the awesomeness of God and his compassion and love toward each of us. The mere fact that we are here in worship says that we can attribute that to the fact that we can identify with something that he has done in our lives. What are the attributes of his love and of his personhood? How are you willing to walk in the love of Christ? You know, this passage starts off in Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Psalm 150 tells us to praise the Lord and gives us all the different ways to praise him. Tells us that he's not limited just to the praise from our lips or the praise from uh, the movement of our body, but praise him with sounds of tambourines, cymbals, organs, flutes, harps, everything that has breath, we are to use as a, an avenue to praise the Lord. And I think about the fact that I'm not forced to praise the Lord. None of us are forced to praise him. He's not twisted anybody's arm to serve him. He's not bribed anyone to serve him. We serve him because of his great love, undying love, unmerited favor. He didn't have to do it, but he did, but he loved us not because of who we are, but in spite of who we are. When I bless the Lord, I get 
uh, a time where I can focus on everything that he has done. When I bless the Lord, I get God's attention and he steps in to my life. There is a saying that's come out recently, when God shows up, he shows out. And I think that every one of us that named the name of Christ can think of some way that God has shown up in our lives not only has he shown up, interacted in such a way he has shown out, outdone himself, himself with the great benefits toward each and every one of us. There's a song that says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me. <clears throat> When I praise the Lord, he takes up residence in my praise. The scripture tells us that he inhabits the praise of his people. There's something about when we lift up and magnify the Lord, he steps into our lives, steps into our, our anointing, steps in and causes us to know without a shadow of a doubt, we's the, he's there. When I stop and praise the Lord and he takes up residence in me, I also stop and reflect and think of all the wonderful things that he has done. You can't get up in the morning if you know the Lord and not realize that God has been good to you. You can't get out of your bed in the morning and put your feet on the floor and not realize that every step that you take is ordered of the Lord. You can't get up in the morning and not know in the depths of your spirit that God took a census the night before of every breath that you took, every hair upon your head, Every time you blinked an eye in your sleep, God has a record of it. Every dream that you had, the Lord was there either protecting you from nightmares or enhancing the beauty of a wonderful, precious dream that you might have had during your sleep. When I think of what he has done and is doing, I can't stop praising his name. He enters into every part of our being. In spite of what we go through, I can't stop praising the Lord. No matter what the enemy throws at me, I can't stop praising the Lord. One of the things that I realize now is that when the enemy comes against you, it's usually because you are on the brink of something big coming from on high. And as I said this week in a Zoom meeting, so I'm polishing my shouting shoes because my blessing is on the way. In spite of what you go through, as, and everything you go through, God is with you. There is nothing, nothing that goes on in your life that God hasn't taken inventory of. There's nothing that he has not interceded in your behalf, even when you don't think about it. There are times when you pray before you get the prayer out of your mouth the Lord has already set the answer in motion. Oh, there are so many things and ways that we can know him by who he is. You know, we know people not just by sight, but we know them by their characteristics. Have you ever thought of the fact that you don't have to see certain people, but just hear their voice and you know who they are. 
And by hearing where the voice is coming from, even with your eyes closed, you can point to the direction of where they are. I thought about how uh, I've got two dogs that seem to know when I'm getting ready to leave the house each morning. There's one that sends out a long, mournful howl. Mm -hmm. It's like, how dare you leave me right now? I've got another one. Honey Bun will go downstairs and take her spot on the couch and perk herself up, perch herself up, and start looking out the window as if to say, I know you're leaving. But there's something else in that that I found out. I don't care what time I get home, one will start barking and with excitement, that the, with the anticipation, I'm coming to let him out for a walk. Honey Bun is there at the window staring out as I back the car in and her tail wagging. And the Lord spoke to me one night and says, with that kind of anticipation, you ought to know where I am and know my every move. You see, they've gotten to the place where they know how I move and what I do and the patterns of my moving. But even down to on Saturday, they seem to know that I sleep in a little bit later before they start stirring to say it's time to go out. You see, we should know and have such a relationship with the Lord that we know him just like that. You see, I found out that it's not just by our sight, but by an aura that each of us has. It's not just how you look, but there's something about the aura that you have that makes us know one another. There is something about the countenance that each of us has that identifies us. There is something about even a fragrance that each of us has that identifies us. I had one of my students stop at my desk the other day to get a pass to go to the office and she stood there and said, you smell good. What are you wearing? I said, oh, that's probably my lager fell. And I held my arm and she says, yeah, that's what I'm smelling. She says, you can smell you as you walk by in the room. There is a fragrance that we have. And you see, each of them also has a fragrance. I can tell what kind of colognes some of the girls are wearing, and I can tell the same thing on some of the guys. I can also tell if they've been up to something that they ain't got no business because you can smell it in their clothes. And you see, that's the way it is when we know one another, we know each other by so many different ways. There's also a way that we know the Lord because of who he is, not just because of sight. Because we have not seen him personally. None of us walked the streets of Jerusalem. None of us were there when he rode in triumphantly and they cried, Hosanna. None of us were there at the Last Supper. None of us were there and witnessed the death on the cross. None of us were standing there at the empty tomb or like Peter went into the empty tomb to see the grave clothes uh, just laid aside and the napkin folded differently. But there's something that we know of him and when we see him, we shall know him. When we see him, we shall be able to, oh, got an echo. We shall be able to see and know everything about him and who he is. Oh, I tell you, how do we know him? We know him by his countenance. 
You know, there is sometimes folks can walk into a room and just light up the room. There's some people like that. They just take command of the room. I, I remember one time my sister and I were talking about how you can dress and said, and the way you walk, once you get all dressed up, you can like take control of the room and cause everybody to look. And I said, yes, and I know when I was driving buses, I had a way when I'd get to the intersection, I'd stop and treat every intersection like it was a new television show because you would see something that would cause you to take notice. And we talked about the fact that some people can cross the street and take control of the intersection. And I remember one time a lady was dressed to kill and when the light changed and said walk out, she strutted across the street. And then after she strutted across the street, everybody in the intersection was still watching, though the light had changed. And I said, that was controlling the intersection. You see, that's what Jesus does in our lives. There is a way that he walks into our life and takes control of everything that goes on. And before he even says a word to my spirit, I can sense when the presence of the Lord is there. Sometimes the fine hairs on the back of my neck will stand up, and sometimes the tears of joy will fall. Sometimes it causes me to wave my hands before he says one word deep down in my spirit. The Spirit of the Lord fills us to overflowing. And just like my students could identify me from my logger fell, there is a sweet savor that the Lord has. There is such a heavy, pungent way that His Spirit comes to us and in us and around us and fills us that it caused the writer to say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Because there's something about his divine presence that can cause you to even taste the aroma of his presence. You know, you can smell an apple pie and know that it tastes good because you smell it. And you, that's one of the reasons, I think, why our senses are so important and our spiritual sense is so important because if you're in tune with Christ, you can know him when he appears and you don't have to wonder, is that the Lord moving or is that just my feelings? Because the presence of the Lord and the spirit don't lie. Your feelings will, but his presence and his spirit will not fail you. And just like I read in the Gospel of John about how the sheep of the Lord know his voice. If you've ever seen pictures of shepherds in the Holy Land and each one having their own flock and they are talking or singing or whatever and there's no fences and nothing to differentiate whose sheep or whose but let the master start moving and that master's sheep will follow. You see, there's something about when you spend time with Jesus, you can't help but know when he speaks. You can't help but know when the Lord's anointing is upon you and you move with him. We know him by his characteristics. And just as we know him by his characteristics, one day he's coming back. Now I know there's a lot of folks in the world that don't believe it, but one day he is coming back. How do I know? Because his word says so. How do I know? It said it in more than one place. And one of the last things that was said, he says, behold, I come quickly. We don't know the day nor the hour, but the Lord will return. I've not seen him face to face, but I will know him when I see him 
because there'll be something in my spirit that will identify with the fact that he's got nail prints in his hand for what he did for me on Calvary. He's got nail prints in his feet for how he carried that rugged cross to the place to die for me. There's a crown of thorns that I would recognize where they were because now there's a crown of victory and I'll know him by the crown of victory because in that crown is my victory. I will know him because I will be able to identify with the sweet savor of his salvation. I will recognize him because of the healings that I've gotten, the victories that I've gotten, and know that this is the one who suffered, bled, and died for me, who brought me from death unto life. I shall know him. How about you? Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you, Lord, that you make yourself real to us. You show yourself to us in such a positive way that when we are lonely, we can feel your presence and know that we are not alone. When we feel defeated, you come to us and make us feel the victory that is in you. When we're sick, we feel the presence of you in the healing of our bodies, of our minds, our souls, and our spirits. And Father, we thank you, and I claim that this message will reach someone in the parting of sins who may not know you as a Savior. And Father, all they have to do is call upon your name and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I'm in need of salvation, and I know that you died for my sins, and Lord, I believe you're coming back for me. Lord, save my soul, and set me free from the penalty and power of sin. And Lord, your word says, whom I save, I will no wise cast out. Father, help someone to realize that today. Not only realize that, but you also fill with the precious power of the Holy Ghost, who is our sealer, our comforter, and reminder of our Redeemer and every blessing that you have in store for us. So, Lord, we claim that. We celebrate it. And we know that it's done in the name of Jesus. That is my story, Lord, and I'm going to stick to it until the day you called me home. Amen.